Hi guys, I'm Ryan Houston and welcome to my Fly Tying channel. If your video is about to start shortly, please take this opportunity to hit the like button down below, leave some comments, tell your friends. Interaction, likes, subscriptions help my channel to grow and help me to keep producing content for yourselves. If you're new to my channel, check out the other videos that I've got. There are over 500 videos at this stage, so there should be something there for everybody. Again, video is about to start. Hit that like button down below. Hi hey guys, I uh, throw a classic fishing fly tonight and this one is the Black Dose. So it is a bit of a long video, so we shall get into it and uh, we'll try and tie it as fast as we can I suppose. So uh, here we have a size one and a half Daiichi in a 20-51. So, tip on this is a silver oval, so I'm going to use a fine silver oval here, and I'm going to take it down around the bend a little bit, flip it up so that I can wrap into the bend or curve of the hook and put on three to five turns. I'll take my tying thread back to that and tie it off. Take it forward. So, uh, for the tag on this fly, it's a light orange floss or silk. Again, try and keep the floss flat. And I'm wrapping backwards to create an underbody as such with the first layer and then when I get to my silver tinsel I'll start coming forward at the front I'll then travel forward a bit because the body on this is seals fur so it doesn't matter and I find this the neatest way of getting your tail tied down onto the tie because there's less of a stop and therefore less of a step to it. For the tail we're going to use a golden pheasant topping. So I'm going to look here and see if I find something. Suitable. Okay, so uh, there are some veilings on this tail, so there is uh, basically teal and ibis, or some sort of a sub for ibis. So what I'm going to do is put on uh, some teal first. So what I've done this is I've taken a teal feather, nipped out the tip, and then separated it out into this V, so pulled some of the fibres back. So you've seen me do this for making throats and stuff before, so if I put that on there, I essentially have a fork sitting out. So what I'll do is I'll just pull that forward a bit till it moves off of the stem and the two sides of it then should come together nice and neatly for a teal teal peeling. And we'll trim that. So then uh, for an ibis sub I'm going to use a little bit of red uh, goose shoulder. Take a little strip out of each side. 
match them up together and set that on. So I'm setting it on to the same length roughly as the teal. Pinch it. heavy silver oval. I'm going to tie that on on the far side. Take my tie and thread back. And then I'm going to wax it. Uh, so body on this fly is in two parts. So uh, the first part is a light blue seal. Take some seals for it, dub it on there, start to twist it, um, then take a turn back towards the back of our tying silk. And then once you've caught a couple of fibers you can start to twist that up more. Take the there's no butt uh, on this fly, so uh, the first turn is kind of important that it's nice and level with the back of your fly. So uh, put on essentially two turns worth or two turns of tinsel worth uh, at the rear there. And then it's time to put in a hackle. So for the hackle I'm going to use a black cock hackle. I'm going to double that over. check out my techniques section on my channel you will find uh, a video there on doubling hackles which extends to several different processes and I tie that in on top here right by its tip pointing forwards then we're going to complete the rest of the body with black seal so Wax up my thread, take my black seal, dub it down the thread like this, and then I'll start to twist it a turn to catch some fibers and continue to twist. previous end of my sort of dubbing noodle or whatever you want to call it, uh, these new fibers will mesh into that and allow us to extend the dubbing noodly thing, whatever you want. And so on until I just get up onto this uh, return eye here. slightly inclined to thin out the front of it a bit more uh, just to so we don't end up with big step for our uh, for our winging. We'll take our tinsel now take the first turn across our blue section and then the second turn is going to cross over the top of our hackle tie and so right at it and that way as we wrap the hackle it'll be tight in behind the tinsel and that will protect it. When wrapping onto 
bodies like this what you need to do is almost exaggerate your your turn of tinsel so you go for, further forward than what you intended to be or at a, at a steeper angle because as you wrap it back it will slide back until it catches some of the uh, the dubbing take that right underneath and onto the top and catch across it turn it so that it lays in the return eye and tie that down and trim it off so what that'll do then is because it's laying down into the return eye is it'll fill that gap up and not create too much of a bulk or a, or a step as such so take our hackle and then we're going to follow in tight behind the uh, tinsel with it that'll protect it from the fish's teeth and you notice that I'm sort of rotating my hackle as I go so that it lays flatter and then stroking it back into position as I wrap it rather than just wrapping it on randomly and letting it allow, allow it to lay in whatever way it wants we're controlling the direction of the fibres so that is the body of our black dose done so next the wing um, so the wing is uh, tippets paired uh, and then a variety of slips uh, over those so you have to sort of think uh, about the size of the fly I suppose to start off with so if we're tying a biggish fly like this we can probably get away with full tippets um, but if we end up with a smaller size fly you might just go in with uh, either smaller tippets but then I think the fly gets quite stiff or you could go to slips I suppose so I've paired a couple of these tippets and what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip off holding the two feathers together I'm going to strip off a bit of the underneath there the idea being that's going to lay on something like that Strip off then less of the top edge of the feathers. I'm going to get that up on top and tie them in place. So, this is just one possibility of doing the other way round would have been to have put on there's a throat to go onto this as well now you could put that on before this um, and some people will argue that that is the way it should be but uh, I think do certainly when we're tying a fishing fly here do what suits you I'm going to put a bit of varnish on that just to try and secure the whole thing wrap into it so that is our underwing, or our supporting wing, uh, done. So next I'm going to put on our throat. So the throat on this one it calls for like a wine or a plum coloured hackle. So I'm going to use this which is like a... light claret typed hackle. I'm just trying to search here for one that's not too different in final fibre size to our body hackle. So taking this hackle, stripped it back until I'm sort of happy enough with the length there, and then I'll double that again. Track off the tip. Pull out a few fibres, tie it in by the tip, fold it back. And 
and then we're going to wrap that on. So again, I'm just altering the angle of the stock as I go to get it to sit back down on the previous hackle. I'm done with it, I tie across it. Then to put the rest of our wing on, um, we can choose to leave the hackle as we can, as we have it here. A lot of people taking preen hackles down, but the, once they get wet, they're just gonna go back to where they started. So I'd be inclined, if they were interfering with the set of the wing, is just to pluck the upper edge. sit back on this. So uh, the rest of the wing calls for uh, in small sizes parrot and uh, ibis. In a larger size fly like this you'd be using some sort of swan or goose dyed in those colours so the sort of like chartreuse green and uh, the red. Uh, there's teal, there's unbarred summer duck. Unbarred summer duck tends to be quite a short material. It's very difficult to find long fibred stuff in that. Uh, Golden pheasant, teal, and uh, some sort of like a lightish mottled turkey, uh, and peacock hurl. Now, peacock hurl is a nightmare to get to marry to anything in there, I find. So, what I'm going to do is to put it on now. I'll take like a bunch of that. Back. I'm just going to set it on top there and allow it to come a little bit longer than our uh, wing here and then I'm going to tie it down there and that will get involved with our wing. But I'm not stressing too much on how particular it is and where its position is. So the wing itself then, what I have is uh, some bunches here. So as you can see I have a so I have turkey, golden pheasant, then I have a red uh, goose and then I have a bit of green goose all tied tips down here. I'm not marrying these together such I'm sort of they're just in position for length longest on the top so I'll take this bunch and I'll set it down this is my far wing and then I'm going to take the exact same makeup here uh, and that is my near wing but obviously from the opposite sides of our feathers so I've held them together by their bases as well I'll take the other bunch and we'll set the two up one on either side and sort of just pinch it together so it's come together like our sort of married wing but the bunches are not married at these bases here. Make sure they're sort of matched for tips here. How long do you want it? I've, I'm going out to sort of uh, tail length here on this here because I think to my eye it, it matches up better. Um, but some people will tie it shorter than that. Once I'm happy enough with the positioning I'll pinch it here do a pinched loop and pull up and down and that'll tighten it down into it to hold our wing in place. Okay. And 
once I'm happy enough that it's sitting, I'll just put a few turns to tighten that up. Stroke the sort of back. And then we can add on our other bits of the wing. So uh, the teal and the uh, summer duck. So I'm going to take here. This is probably something like a pintail or something. So it's slightly bigger than teal, but similar idea of markings. So I'm going to take a slip from that side of it. I'm going to set that on the side here. Tie it in place. I'm going to take a matching slip then from the other side of it. Again, I'm going to tips down here and I'm tying that in on my side. Summer duck, as I said, this is quite a bit shorter in fibre. Uh, I'm going to tie that on then. Almost like slates, I suppose you can imagine. Like I'm not attempting to marry them to each other. side, set that down, press it in place, tie over it and hopefully that will sit on the side and can hold some of those others in place too. I'm going to trim up my head now, take off all these Ends. So bronze mallard here, I'm going to take a feather for each side and what I'm going to do is strip off the poorly marked bit. I'm going to take off a slip then that still has a little bit of the grey attached to it. Um, that'll tend to conform I find better and you get that curve. I'm going to take this the two feathers, this one is uh, slightly shorter in length, so I'm going to put it on and then match the other side up to it. So tie it on the side and allow it to roll on until it hits the midpoint. And then I'll get the other feather and take a strip off it to roughly the same thickness. So again, it's like a tips down application. I'll match that up for length by its tips. When I'm happy that it's the right length, then I'll sort of press it down on the side. I'm going to push up the base here, roll it over to meet in the middle. to thumbnails to affect the uh, the basis and when I'm happy with that then I'm going to tighten that down. So this fly doesn't have a topping on top of it but it does have our macaw 
orange, blue and gold ones. So, take our macaw, select a fiber, take the matching feather and select one of it too. And then we'll set that on top. So, some people like these quite short, some people like them the full length of the wing, some people like them sitting up high, some people like them curving towards the top of the wing. That is up to your own preference. I'm going to match them up roughly for length, these are crossing across each other. And set them in place, tighten into it. <laughs> they're actually trying to knit themselves a little bit to the uh, to the mallard. That's why they're not really playing ball. Trim that. Trim that. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a bit of clear varnish into the this end of it, not the wing side of it, it's just the uh, tie ends. Hold all in place and bind down over those ends. So if you wanted, you could leave it at that. And just varnish the head, but I'm going to put on a little black wool head. So I'm going to take like a fine merino type wool here and pull out a strand of it. Stretch out a bit of our tie and thread. Wax that and wrap back onto the head there to create like a wax bed that should stop it from slipping and then apply that up onto the head. And so what I'm doing is I'm trying to sort of wrap it up here on the uh, almost flat portion of the head, if you know what I mean. They made like a little plateau for it to sit on. Once it comes off that, just go to the front and build back a small uh, thread head and finish that. that to finish it. So I'm using a thin varnish first so the idea there is that we'll varnish the head but a very little bit of it will just hit the wool there and that will adhere to it and stop it from slipping. But that is our black dose tied. So you see I've tried not to end up with uh, a solid sort of married together wing because I think it'll have more movement in the water. So hopefully 
you're still with us hopefully you liked this video uh, so if you did give us a like subscribe tell your friends check out the other videos on the channel and until next time tight lines thanks for watching